Rise of the Bandit for FightHype.com with me, promoter Eddie Hearn. Eddie, you alright? How are you? I'm well. I've, I've noticed that your videos are sort of going around everywhere, like people cut them up. Yeah, just get a lot of chat. Yeah, yeah but you should understand this, that sometimes when you do an hour interview, no one wants to go for an hour. I know. But sometimes when you cut something up, it doesn't necessarily, like, you could be talking something for 10 minutes mm. and then get to that point. And if you cut it there, but don't worry. No, no, no. The one it's that made me laugh was like, Which one? Uh, I said, this is a dangerous fight yeah. and we've got to be compensated accordingly. Yeah. And like, this, this guy's like, yeah, he said it. He's ducking wilder. It's like, no, mate, like, that's life. Yeah. But you don't understand. <laughs> like, these people are idiots sometimes. It's not like, oh, we're not fighting wilder unless we get money. We ain't asking for a load of money. We're just asking for a little bit more than we're getting already. Mm. Not five or six times our highest purse, mm. like you, my old son. Mm. Anyway, crack on. Yeah, but on that note, you know, like what we've noticed as an organisation that a lot of our people who follow us like to have topic specifics. Yeah. So sometimes you can spend 20 minutes talking yeah, no, to you. That's good. I like what you're doing. And then sometimes. Oh, I wasn't criticising. No, no, it's good. Thing. It's good. You're gonna, give us a, you're gonna give us a shout out today, aren't you, on your Instagram? Am I? Okay. Yeah, you did. Well, okay. yeah. I'll be on it as well. Okay. Uh, Eddie, um, that was, as you mentioned the other yeah. day, um, when it comes to the press conference and fight they're kind of a bit mellow down, they've yeah. got to make weight, and it was kind of that. Yeah, because it? there's no point, is it? I mean, like, the, I think that I always think the press conference shenanigans are for the opening press, because both guys are a lot more like relaxed, they've been eating, mm. you know, but now it's like, you've got to make weight. I'm fighting you on Saturday. It's a little bit of a backhanded compliment for Phil Greco. It's like I really like I've been a long admirer of yours. Oh, thanks, Phil, but but you're you're finished. So, oh, no. so it's an important fight, very important fight for Amir Khan, and he's a big big name. You know, sold this arena out, nine thousand, completely sold out, nine thousand. It's going to be brilliant, and um, you know, he's going to get a shock when he walks out because he hasn't really boxed in that kind of atmosphere for a while. And it's going to be very, of course, pro Amir Khan. And it's, it's a very important fight for him. Phil's got three-time world, former champion, world champion. Yeah, legend. Yeah. Uh, Fernando Vargas. Mm. I know you were very. I was like, I was like a fanboy. Yeah, I saw you on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, obviously, has a lot of experience, and you mentioned there whether you're out one year or two years. You can think how you want. You're always going to carry oh, ring. It's a massive disadvantage for Amir Khan. He's been out for two years. You can't sort of uh, butter it up or tell it any other way. Vargas knows inactivity is horrific for your career. There's so many fighters at the moment in the US whose inactivity is shocking, it's disgusting, and they'll never progress to where they should be. But to be out for two years and come back from a knockout, a lot of these guys are just inactive because their promoter can't give them dates. This guy's been out from a knockout. So coming back from that fight was always going to be difficult, but to do it after two years is really difficult. And I think the Greco's team are sort of thriving off there, thinking, we can do this, we can do this. They've had 12 weeks. Listen, a, a, um, a prime Amir Khan beats Phil LeGreco 98 times out of 100. Right? And Amir Khan, who's coming back from the Canelo defeat, who ain't boxed for two years, it's a different kind of fight. But he's a big favorite, but the pressure is to win. If he can look good, then we're cooking on gas. And um, that's what I believe he'll do on Saturday. Is it important for him to look good? Of course, it's always important to look good. Doesn't matter if you're first fight back. Doesn't matter if you're turning up here today. Doesn't matter if you're going to a meeting. It's always important to look good. Because look good, looking good raises your stock, raises your value. And don't matter if you're walking down the street. Don't matter if you're in the ring. Winning's always important. Looking good is even better. So if you can combine the two, we don't, we don't want. We don't want questions to be asked after this fight. Oh, I mean, he didn't look great. Do you think, you know, we want him to go, I want, at the end of this fight, I want to open my social media, I want people to go, wow. And that's the pressure for Amir Khan. Not just to win, but to look good doing it. Also, press release, also telecast in America on ESPN. ESPN, yeah, great to be working with ESPN. And top rank, um, you know, it's important that these fights are seen across the, the globe. And next week, obviously, we're in New York doing our own show for HBO. So it's great times for worldwide boxing. You know, promoters are trying much harder. Fans are interacting more than ever. There's more broadcasters ever in the sport of boxing, which is great because competitors are putting money in. But if you've got one show in town, how, how much does the broadcaster want to invest? You know, for, for years, it's been Showtime and HBO and 
they want to outdo each other and sometimes someone loses a bit of appetite. But now you've got ESPN, you've got loads of other platforms going to be launching soon. So it's going to get really exciting. Um, so it's great times here, America, and um, we're excited for, for the next few years. In other news announced yesterday, Canelo serving six months suspension. suspension. Easy for you, sir. Yeah, easy for me, just like it was for Matt yeah, to yeah, say. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Phenomenal. Phenomenal. <laughs> um, a lot of criticism about how they've gone about this and the fact that he's going to have this massive payday anyway now in September. Yeah. Uh, but what were your whole thoughts? I saw Dan Raphael saying, well, this is a big punishment. He's lost $20 million. So he hasn't. He's just postponed it a couple of months. Um, no fine. Yeah, that, yeah, you should definitely get a fine. It's a bit of a stranger. Because normally, don't they take a percentage? Or Maybe. I mean, that's what the they price. should do. But also, I see it like this. It doesn't really deter people mm -hmm. from cheating. And any crime, the way you avoid people committing crimes is to make sure they understand the punishment. You talk about knife crime and stuff like that now. It's very simple. You get caught with a knife on the streets, you're in, mate. And it might be five years. Now, when you go to Abu Dhabi or Dubai, you know the punishment's out there for drink driving, for anything to do with drugs. That's why no one fucks around. You know? So it needs to be the same in boxing. You fuck around, you get caught, you're out. You can't be one or the other. But again, I always go back to the comment of, was he unlucky? Did he eat some bad meat? Like everyone says, Eddie, you stupid. But I don't know, maybe he did. Don't look like it. But it doesn't really matter because when you talk about the punishment, his reputation is tarnished for the rest of his career. And it doesn't matter if it's six months, 10 months, 12 months, he will always be called a drug check. And that's, that's gonna haunt him forever. Whether he cheated or he didn't cheat, he's responsible for what goes into his, his, uh, his tests. And um, is it long enough? No. Should there have been a financial penalty? Yes. The only thing I will say, which I think Ron Lewis said, um, was the only good thing about it is they could have let him fight on May the 5th. Like, we wouldn't have been surprised. Do you know what I mean? But at least they've actually gone no and then banned him for six months. So, like, it wouldn't have surprised me if they just let the May the 5th fight go. So at least there has been some disruption. And the one I feel sorry for is Gennady Glover. You know, he's got to fight this fight now against Vaines, who no one's really interested in. But what's, what's he expected to do? You know, he's, he's preparing for the biggest fight he's like. I think also, you know, from another level, you look at the people that Canelo's boxed, Amir Khan, Liam Smith, Gennady Golovkin. How long has he been going on? If he was cheating, how long has he been cheating? Who knows? And then moments after they announced the suspension, I think Golden Boy, I don't know how long it was, it wasn't very long, they then announced that Canelo was boxing, definitely September 15th. At September 15th. I don't blame him for that. I don't blame him for that. I mean, the Triple G fight now, is that even bigger? Yeah, it's bigger. It's more money? Yeah, because it'll do more pay per view buys. Um, rightly or wrongly, that's the truth. But Canelo's reputation as a brand, as an ambassador, why not? I think it's always most of the talk over the past few weeks been about heavyweight. I'm here in Dylan White, July. Possibly, yeah, I said to him, it's a date that we talked about, and then he goes and tweets it. So yeah. it's not confirmed for July 21st. We're in negotiations at the moment with Caddy Salen for Pulev against White. We will see. Obviously, Gerald Miller next week find to help us in Brooklyn. Um, it's exciting times. Great time for the heavyweight division. So White will most likely fight is mandatory? For, to become the mandatory for the IBF. Yeah. The IBF. Yeah. And then also with Joshua, any updates? I know I spoke to you only two days ago, but... Yeah. No, no we have, I haven't heard from uh, those guys. The deadline's passed for the offer now, but I never heard about it anyway. Um, I've just said to them, can we meet in New York next week when I'm there? So hopefully... I mean, again, it's like... They don't come... Like, we made an offer, we didn't get a response. Not even fuck off. Not even a, a receipt. Not even, are you fucking joking? We just heard them go to the media and tell everybody off. Okay. Then, last Wednesday, we were told there'd be a counter offer. 
within 24 hours, 48 hours. A week, eight days has passed. We have not heard anything. So now I've reached out again to say, can we meet in New York? But to anybody watching this video, are you off your mind? If they want the fight, they bang my fucking door then. <laughs> are you stupid? But you're running from Wilder. Well, so we're making the offers. We're trying to arrange meetings. We're not even getting a fucking response. Other than people talking to the media. Don't talk to the media, talk to me. Because when you've got a fight scheduled against Dominic Brazil, but you're telling the media, we're, we're pushing so hard for the AJ fight. Show me one place where they push for the AJ fight. Non-existent. Do not be fooled, people. Look at the facts on paper. Anthony Joshua, 21 fights, two unification fights, world championship fight in his 16th fight, Vladimir Klitschko in his 19th fight, Joseph Parker in his 21st fight, Deontay Wilder, 40 fights, no unification fight, never had a real test since Luis Ortiz. Look what happened there. Trust me when I say there's only one camp pushing this fight. And all you people sending me messages on Instagram from America, I know you've got America in your heart, but have common sense in your brain. If you want a fight, you fucking bang on the door. You beat the drum. There's no banging on a draw, there's no beating the drum. <laughs> you, know, you say that John Dewana has three managers, so who are you meeting potentially next week? I don't know, whoever wants to meet me. I'll meet with Shirley Winkle. I'll meet with Al Heyman. I'll meet with Jay Diaz. This is the problem, he has three managers. I don't think they particularly like each other. He has no promoter. But the whole thing's a mess. But, as I said, all we can do is try and arrange meetings, to make offers, to try and push the fight. So, let's say, let's say we want the fight next. Joshua, I spoke to him yesterday. He wants this fight next. Let's say the meetings next week are negative. You're not getting much out of it. Are you then going to plan? Yeah, we're already week? planning. I mean, I'm already planning two or three guys to fight Joshua in August, September, October. So. You have to do that. Mm. I can't rely on a guy whose team ain't even coming back to me. But to, to, oh, we just and then all of a sudden, like Povetkin, we've got two only a couple more weeks to negotiate. So do we ask for a voluntary against someone else? Do we fight Povetkin? Do we fight Wilder? We want the Wilder. Fight. Mm. Well, let's see what happens next week in New York. Hopefully, cut that motherfucker up. <laughs> My guy in America is there, Ben, so hopefully good, good. we'll catch up with you right. in America. Yeah, I look forward to that. We'll uh, have some fun next week. 100%. Anyhow, fighthub.com, thank you very much.